What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek and today we are looking at streaming gear and where I would rate it on a tier list. I've never done a video like this. They've been out for a while. They've been popular, but I've never seen one on streaming gear. So today I'm gonna just kind of rank these things. These are all items I've used personally. I test a lot of gear and stuff. So I just kind of grabbed some of the stuff that I've used over the years that came to mind, threw them in here. And then, like I said, we're gonna do a tier list of them. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first one is not a actual product. Well, it is a product, but it's not a physical product. It is a digital product, which is Nerd or Die. So Nerd or Die is an overlay website uh, where you can buy overlays for your stream. I would say for myself that Nerd or Die is probably an A. I like Nerd or Die. Speaking of Nerd or Die, let's go ahead and grab owned.tv which is this one here. And I'm going to rank this one a C. So overlays are not necessary, especially if you're a beginning streamer, uh, you should just focus on just trying to, you know, make a couple nice little graphics or something. Don't pay for logos. Don't pay necessarily for stream overlays. You don't need them when you're just starting out, but when you do need them and you don't want to, you know, maybe you don't want to pay a big artist or maybe you're like myself and you like changing it up a lot. Then I think nerd or die or own.tv are good for that. However, out of my experience of buying from both, I've always found that I enjoy the packages better from nerd or die. So that's why I'm going to give nerd or die an A and I'm going to give owned.tv a C. Sorry, owned.tv. I will find you and I will kill you. Next thing up, we got the Logitech Stream Cam. So this is not the, the popular Logitech C920. This is their more premium stream cam that they came out with specifically for like gamers and stuff. I'm gonna rate this a C as well. The reason being is the problem, and this is not just with the Logitech high-end webcam, it's with all of them. The quality is a little bit better than something like the Logitech C90, 920. But the problem is it's not that much better compared to like when you go to a mirrorless or a DSLR SLR camera, which nowadays you can get one that would work for your stream for like 400, 450 bucks. By the time you go spending 200, $250 on a high end webcam that then when you're going to have to upgrade to a mirrorless or DSLR eventually anyways, then just becomes a paperweight because uh, you're never going to be able to sell the webcam for anything. So I am not a fan of expensive webcams. I believe the Logitech C920, which I'll grab right here. And I'm gonna give it an S because it is still the king of webcam. All right, next thing's next is the uh, Elgato Streamlight is this one. I'm gonna give the Elgato Streamlight a B. Reason being is it's, it's a high quality product. There's nothing wrong with it. Elgato's apps and stuff work great. Whereas when you buy a lot of third party lights and stuff, you can always have issues with the apps or they don't keep them updated. So they break as phones and stuff update. Elgato's on the ball when it comes to stuff like that. But the problem with this key light is there are so many options out there for good quality lights that are cheaper that the price just still scares me away. I mean, it's just I mean, like almost, what is it? 200 bucks, I think. It's right around 200 bucks for this for one light. So, which takes me into what I what I still use today, actually, because I didn't want to spend $400 on two lights, is these newer RGB lights. These are the newer 660 Pro RGB lights. I like these for a couple reasons. Number one, they do white light and yellow light. You know, they, you can do the spectrum of, of that but they also are RGB. You can change them to whatever color you want. Those are what I'm currently using right now on my desk. They come with the desk stand. I love these lights. They also come with barn doors on them so you can focus the light a little bit better. So I'm gonna give them an S. And I think if I remember right, it was like 250 bucks for both of them. It comes together as a kit, as you can see here in the picture. All right, so next we'll do these blue light glasses. So I threw these on here because, you know, if you're a gamer like me and you're a streamer and Plus, maybe you just also work a job nowadays where a lot of jobs require you to be on a computer. Dude, your eyes start bugging out, man. So I thought I'd try them. I'm gonna give them a D. Why? They don't work. It was a waste of money. In fact, I don't even like how they also discolor everything a little bit because of, you know, taking away the blue tint or whatever. All right, next things next is the Beacon Mix Create. Now that is what I'm currently using. It's sitting right here in front of me on my desk. If you don't know what the Beacon Mix Create is, it's like an audio interface for your computer that then allows you to adjust the volume of everything independently from each other on your computer. Meaning you can turn up and down just your music by spinning a knob. I love these types of devices 
And if you would have asked me like two years ago what I thought of this, I would have probably gave it a A, maybe even an S. But today, 2023, end of 2023, I'm going to have to give it a B. The reason being is I do believe that the new one by Elgato that is a combination of both a audio interface that allows you to adjust things independently as well as a stream deck together, I think is way better. Uh, and I'm going to give that an S tier. I love the stream decks. Speaking of which stream deck XL S stream deck, normal a only because once you start using these, this amount of buttons is not enough. And it is a pain in the butt to like try to have to make pages. I mean, you can, but it's just so much nicer to have the big full screen and hit them. All right. So going back to lights next, uh, we have the Godox. I love Godox actually, but these are the Godox key lights. Now, again, they're great products, um, but they are more pricey. And I think you get a better bang for your buck from these newer lights. These newer lights are complete metal, even the housings and stuff on them. They're like aluminum or whatever, but, but they're fully metal, no plastic. So I'm going to have to put those as an A because they're great products. If I had to choose out of these three, pro these three different key lights, I would definitely be choosing the newer personally. The next thing is it's these kits you can buy on Amazon. It comes with a green screen as well as a package of lights. So normally two softbox lights and then two umbrella style lights. These are great starter lights. These are what I started with. One of these kits. The one I started with was by Luma, Lima, Limo, Lumo studio, L I M O. I don't know that they're around anymore. Cause again, these were the, like 2016. I bought these lights, but it worked great for me, man. Like I think I paid like 150 bucks on sale for it. So for the price and everything, I would have to give these, these kits an S now, obviously I'm sure there's some companies out there that suck, but a lot of these lights, they're all the same light made over in China or whatever. So just find the best one for the best price and just make sure, you know, it has some good reviews or whatever, and you'll be all right. I think next we have the Godox SL 60 W. So these are more like a professional light, like maybe like an aperture light. If you know what those are, these are used typically a lot more for YouTube studios and stuff. I love Godox lights, man. Like I said, these ones, you know, I don't think they're the best bang for the buck out of what's available, but this one, I think it is compared to a lot of other lights that, you know, these type of lights like aperture lights are great as well, but they cost way more. And to me, these Godox lights are just as high quality, you know, to where, you know, say the word you want to say, you're not going to notice any difference. Honestly, these are a set of newer lights as well. If you're looking at the newer lights like these, you might be tempted to go with the cheaper option that includes softbox. These are plastic and these are garbage. I went through three set of these warranted trying to use them and they just broke consistently. They're a pain in the butt to set up. You can only change it white to orange. I think they were like 80 bucks or less for a set of two, but they are 100% not worth the money. Please, for the love of God, do not buy these lights. <laughs> Last set of lights that I see here on the screen are these LED RGB floodlights. So these are made by a company called Melpo, M-E-L-P-O. They still sell them. I've had them now for two years, but I had another set of theirs in like 2016 that I bought them. The difference was these were just higher wattage. So these are like 400 watt equivalent. The other ones I had were 100 watt equivalent and that's each one. There's only like a 10 or $15 price difference. And the amount of, of light you get from these, the, the, the 400 watt equivalent is so much better that it's 100% worth it to not get the 100 watt at all. I would never personally buy those and only get like the 400 watt, but I love these lights. I'm going to give them an S I've never had any issues with them. They work great. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about green screen. First up is this is the Elgato green screen. This is a normal version, the picture of this one, but they have an XL version. I think the normal version is 150. The XL version is like 200. The problem with the normal one, I'm going to give it a C. The problem with the normal size one is it's just not big enough. If you just sit at your desk like this the whole time and you don't ever move and you're not very expressive, it's probably fine. And you know, you'd probably rate it higher, but for someone like me, I use my hands. I get excited and throw up my hands when something happens. And this green screen, like my hands would just always pop out to the sides and stuff. Even like now where the camera, cause I have the camera zoomed in, but it was even worse. I mean, like the green screen would be like in my camera view, like here right now. And I ended up buying this other one. It's called, it's by a company called Fudsey 
Fudesy. I don't know. F U D E S Y. And it's just an extra large. It's actually larger, a little bit wider than even the Elgato XL green screen. And when I bought it, it was only like 120 bucks. Um, so it was cheaper than even the smaller Elgato screen, and it was larger. I'm going to give it an A. Uh, the only reason I'm not giving it an S and I'm giving it an A is because I just don't, green screens aren't needed. I mean, they're nice to have, but they're not needed. So I wouldn't call it an S-tier product. I don't know, in my opinion. Next, we're going to talk about, let's go with microphones. I'll start with lavalier microphones. Lavalier microphones? What the heck are you talking about, Derek? I thought this was streaming gear. Yes, it is. I use lavalier mics for streaming. Why? because I do VR streaming. And when I'm playing VR and I have my headset on and I'm standing up back here, uh, this mic here, my main mic, my Audio-Technica 20, 2035, is not gonna pick me up very good. Or if I crank it up to where it is, it's gonna pick up a lot of background noise. So the first product I ever started with was this little device. It was called, it's by Remo Mic, R-I-M-O-M-I-C. But uh, it sucks, man. <laughs> but I'll give it a C. No, you know what? I'm not. I'm giving it a D. The range is terrible on it. It would drop in and out all the time. The quality of the voice didn't sound great. The reason I got it and I, I bought it was number one, it was cheap. And it was before I realized like just because something's cheap doesn't mean you should buy it. I then upgraded to these ones, which are the CVM-WM100. I actually used these lavalier mics for quite a while. And I liked them. They were great. I would give them an A. They did what I needed them to do. Uh, the reason I give them an A instead of an S is because of the size of them. They're big. They're bulky. They got the big antenna sticking up out of the top. Uh, so it gets in, you know, when I'm playing VR, it gets in my way a little bit, you know, because I got to have it attached to your, you know, hip or whatever, your belt. And then the microphone comes up underneath your shirt and clips up here, the little lav mic. And I ended up eventually, which actually, before we go to that, let me say, this is the newer version of Comica Mike's Lavalier that I would purchase if I was getting some. Um, these are, and you know what, actually, I'm going to move these down to B because I'm going to give these Comicas, the new ones, an A. So these are the Comica Boom X-D microphones. They are smaller than these ones. They have better range than these ones. They have better battery life than these ones. So I really like these microphones. The only reason I'm putting them in an A is is because I ended up picking up these DJI lavalier microphones, which I'm going to give an S. I'll throw them up there. But these DJI lavalier microphones, and the reason I love these DJI lavalier microphones is because is that's all it is that clips on you. It is just this little rectangle. Now, it's larger than like the little lavalier mic you're going to have with the big packs. You know, it's probably you know, gonna be like this on your chest, but that's it. There's no wires, there's no box or anything, and they work great. And I love them because it has this device that lets you plug them in via even just one eighth inch jack. So you don't need a digital audio interface. Uh, it can, and you can use them on like your normal cameras and stuff too, if you get into YouTube and stuff. The other nice thing is they come with little windscreen muffs. They come with all of that. And the case is a charger for all three of the products at one. So they're dope. I give them an S. They're a great product. Highly recommend. Sticking with microphones, but switching to normal ones. There's two microphones really that I've used the most or have used consistently. This is the Five Fine F I F I N E. I've talked about it so many times on my channel. This is the T669, which is a full kit. It comes with a boom arm. It comes with the pop filters. It comes with the shock mount. It comes with everything you need to have great audio, as well as obviously the microphone. And it's like $60. And I'm telling you, I've done, you can look it up on the channel. I've done video comparison where, or audio tests where I compared this microphone to like the Blue Yeti, the Blue Snowball, my Audio Technica AT2035, all of those. And it's really good. This is S tier because it is the best value product, the best budget product out of everything, not just microphones, that I think I have ever used. And then my next recommendation is this Audio-Technica AT2020. This is the 2035, you don't need it. I think this is 150. The Audio-Technica 2020 is 99. I'm gonna give it an A, even though I'm using over the Fine Fine. Yes, it is better than the Fine Fine in terms of quality, but, and for the price, a hundred bucks, it's not bad. And you can get it both in XLR, where you use an audio interface hooked to your computer, but you can also get a USB version of it where you can just plug it directly into your computer. Audio-Technica makes great mics, but I think there are better mics out there. For the price, I don't know. I don't know enough about this. 
uh, ones. But, you know, I love the sound of it, but it, it, it did take me quite a bit of fooling around with the settings of it and EQs and stuff to get it to where I really like the sound like a lot. So that's why I'm going to throw it under the A. All right. Headphones, I only have one set here because besides these headphones, I've been using them for years. The only other headphones I really used was Turtle Beach products way in the back, which are way back in the day, which I would throw under D. Um, I don't know how they are today, but way back then, considering they, they were Ds. Uh, but anyways, these Audio Technicas, I love these headphones. They're not super expensive. They're the ATH M50 BT for Bluetooth because they're also wireless. You can do use them either way. You can plug them in with an eighth inch jack on both your computer and in headphones. They also have a wireless battery that lasts like 50 hours of use. They have like a flat profile to them. So they're not super bass heavy like a lot of other headphones. And I used to be like a big bass head. But when I started using these, especially for gaming, I realized I could hear more sounds that I didn't normally hear in the headphones I used because they were so bassy. I could hear footsteps better. I could hear like those quiet little sounds. You know, if someone opened a door that's a little bit further away in a game, like I could hear that stuff a lot more clear because... They're designed so you can hear their flat profile so you can hear everything really, really well. Now that says, okay, so are they not great for music and stuff? No, I would argue they're even great for music because you hear a lot more of the high end notes and the mid notes that sometimes get muffled out by bass heavy headphones like Skull Candies or you know other brands like that. So I would give them an A. I think they're a great product. The only reason I give them an A and not an S is because I do think when you first get them, the earmuffs that come on them are super uncomfortable. They're not padded enough. They can hurt your head. A lot of people complain about them being too tight on their head. The default earbuds are shitty in my opinion. All right, and last but not least, that leads us to camera stuff. So, Camlink 4K. This is a USB 3 device that plugs um, into your computer and then you can plug an HDMI cable into it from your camera and you can use a DSLR or mirrorless camera. I would never recommend picking this up. I'm gonna give it a C. I always had issues with my cameras freezing inside OBS. Like the source would freeze inside OBS all the time with the Camlink 4K. I don't know why. I could never get it figured out. I know lots of people that never have that issue, but I do know that it's also an issue that a lot of people do have with it and have had with it. And it's just never been fixed by Elgato. There's never been an answer to it. With that said, the Camlink Pro by Elgato, which is this right here, I'm going to give an S tier. This one goes directly into a PCI slot, so it goes internally inside of your computer. This has four HDMI ports, so you can grab four sources at once. I love this device. It has always worked flawlessly for me. I've never had an issue at all with it. Every source I plug into it, every time I try to boot it up, it works instantly Never an issue once. It's great. Highly recommend this. Last but not least, cameras. First up is the Canon M200, which is the camera I am still using here. I think this is a great camera. I am going to give it an A. A lot of people, if you read the reviews, it'll, you'll get scared away. So don't listen to the reviews. Let me say that right off the bat. In the reviews, people say that this camera overheats when you're trying to stream. So what they mean is when you're streaming, the overheat icon comes up in the camera. However... It does not affect the camera. You can still stream with the camera. It does not shut off the camera. Nothing like that. It flashes because it warms up. It hits that. But I've, I've had this camera for probably at least four years, three to four years, I would say at the minimum. And it still works perfectly. It, it still looks great. It still works great. I use it all the time. I love it. It's an amazing product and it's like 450 bucks. The other camera I'd recommend kind of in the same range of like, you know, good, what I would consider like a budget mirrorless that works good for streaming, that has clean HDMI output, all the requirements you would need, is the Sony ZV-1. This is technically was released as a vlogging camera, and I know like the Sony A5, 5200 or 5500 I don't even know where they're at on that series right now, is recommended a lot, and that is also a great camera. camera. No issues with that one at all, but I love the quality that comes out of this camera. It has the lens is fixed. You can't change the lens. Um, it's like $650, but if you're going to do anything outside of just streaming, I think this camera is a better camera versus the Canon M200. The other reason is because if you are recording video, 
the Canon M200 does overheat in 4K and will shut off after probably like 10 minutes. 1080p, you can record up to 30 minutes because Canon cameras also cannot record over 30 minutes because of some old stupid law. Sony cameras can record indefinitely. I don't know how they bypass it or get by it, but you can record as long as you want and you can record in 4K as long as you want and it will not overheat. At least it never has for me. So I really like this camera. I'm going to give it an S and there you have it. That's my tier list of all the equipment I've used. That's how I would rate this gear that I've used. If you're a streamer, you want to check out some of this gear, I will link all of it down in the description below. They are affiliate links. That doesn't mean you pay anything more. It just means I get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon for sending you to their website to buy it. If you can find it cheaper somewhere else, by all means do so. I don't care. But it's just an easy way to support the channel if you're going to buy it off Amazon anyways, um, which most people do because Amazon typically is the best price and stuff. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love your faces. I hope to see you guys in the next one. And until then, peace out, everybody. Later, nerds.